Trammell in the Knox County Sheriff's Office. And uh, we're here this afternoon. Thank you all for coming uh, to cover a shooting that happened last night in our community. And the last 19 hours, our major crimes division has been, along with our patrol and our special teams that were called out last night, uh, have done an exceptional job investigating this shooting. And we have uh, one 18-year-old is dead. Another 18-year-old is going to be charged uh, with murder. And uh, Major Mike McLean with our Major Crimes Division at the Sheriff's Office will go over the timeline of events that happened and uh, take some questions. Now, as you understand, uh, early on in this, there's going to be some questions that can't be answered. Uh, so please uh, indulge us in that. If we can't answer something, uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can with any more information that comes our way on this. Uh, but right now, I'll, I'll uh, turn the floor over to uh, Major Mike McLean. Approximately 8.16 last night, the Knox County Sheriff's Office received a 911 call indicating a 13-year-old juvenile male was reporting a shooting in the 1100 block of Amber Glade Lane. He had indicated that his friend had been shot and was laying in the yard. Responding patrol units found a Mr. Luster I'll give you the full identifiers at, at conclusion uh, in the backyard of that residence on Everglade. Patrol units found him unconscious and suffering from what appeared to be a gunshot wound. Mr. Luster was transported to the UT emergency room by ambulance. Uh, immediately a perimeter was set at that scene and the surrounding neighborhoods. Due to the proximity of the crime scene to the county line, the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office responded as well, assisted in the perimeter, and in providing personnel as well as uh, canine units. Knox County Sheriff's Office Patrol and canine conducted the canine track that led them to a residence on Clear Ridge. Clear Ridge is a street directly behind uh, the yard where Mr. Luster was found. That residence was cleared by canine and patrol. A search was conducted to the entire surrounding neighborhoods. Investigation by the major crimes unit at the scene led to the identification of Mr. Matthews, Sovereign Matthews, as one of the two individuals that we sought. He resided at that residence that the canines had tracked to. Further investigation identified Mr. Stiles as the primary suspect. It was determined that Matthews and Stiles left the area immediately following the shooting, being driven from that area by a juvenile white female in a black SUV. The sheriff wanted me to make note of the cooperation by the residents on Amberglade very attentive. They observed a vehicle that didn't belong in their neighborhood, had actually called amongst themselves asking uh, what the vehicle was and why it was there. That ended up being the vehicle involved in this incident. Uh, incredibly cooperative when we responded out there. We tied up that neighborhood until almost three in the morning. So uh, he did want me to mention that specifically. Any questions? Where was the victim shot? Where was the gunshot wound? He's not revealing at this time. Um, he was shot. Why was why was he found lying in the neighboring house? Do okay, you know I'm yet? sorry. I thought you went where on the body. Well, both, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, we wouldn't reveal where on the body. But uh, it appears that four individuals met. Two walked from Clear Ridge, and if you look at the map, uh, they walked through the backyard leading out to Amberglade. They're on foot. They get in a car that's parked on Amberglade. Is some kind of a problem. Two individuals get out of the car, and then they're engaged by the two remaining, and that's when shots were fired. Did they at that know point, it? they were in the backyard of that Amberglade address. So the Amberglade address really has nothing to do with anybody who was involved in this crime? Not at all. Um, the only address connected is, I mentioned, uh, Clear Springs. I'm sorry, was this Clear Springs? 
Clear Springs. A Clear Springs was the only address connected, and that's where those two individuals came from and then went back to and left from, and that's also where the canine track led to. And Mr. Matthews lived there? He did. How did we get, uh, how did the, uh, the suspect get from that location to the location where he was found today? Because he was found nearby, correct? No, Mr. Mr. Matthews uh, is, ends up is going to be a witness. Uh -huh. Okay, he, he was not the shooter. And the person... He was interviewed at that house at mm -hmm. about 4 o'clock this morning. And there was somebody else that KCSO picked up earlier today as well, right? Yeah, we just arrested Mr. Stiles. And how did Mr. Stiles get there? Do we know? Yeah. To the farm To the location. The yeah. Out at Cedar Bluff. Oh, we believe it was in the same vehicle he left in. It was a white female juvenile that took them from the scene at Cedar... Oh, I keep on calling the wrong name. Cedar... Cedar Spring. Cedar Springs. To the Farmington neighborhood. No, I'm sorry, it's Clear Springs. Clear Springs. Clear Springs. Okay, right on. So we have a, you have a white juvenile female who brings uh, Mr. Stiles to Mr. Matthews' address. Mr. Matthews and Mr. Stiles go on foot over to Amber Glade. Then they return on foot back to the car and depart. That all happens last night mm -hmm. around probably about 8.45, 8.30, Right. Right. Now and today, uh, Mr. Stiles is at his uh, mother's house when he's approached by major crime detectives and he flees and he's apprehended. So Mr. Stiles' mother lives in the Farmington neighborhood where he was apprehended. Correct. Can you walk us through that? Like that, the, the capture of Mr. Stiles? I think that's where we're, I, I think there's some confusion about okay. how we went from last night to today. Yeah, well, once we, once we identified the second suspect, which we, you know, at that point we're continuing to investigate, identified him as Mr. Stiles, and then we're checking addresses of record. And when we went to that address, which we believe had connections to him, he fled from the back door. And then that's where uh, Knox County Sheriff's Office canine units and patrol units immediately set the perimeter, conducted the search, and they uh, located him. And in conjunction with that, there was some resistance and Mr. Stiles was bitten by a canine unit. So with that, like all of the people surrounding this, um, from the driver to the friend to witnesses to perhaps even, excuse me, his parents or loved ones or people who own the home, are they going to be involved in this case facing charges or anything like that? Again, it's premature, but right now we believe we have uh, two witnesses, one suspect, and we have one victim. And then the juvenile female, we, we've not actually interviewed her yet. We've got her identified. We believe we have her located. That one is in question because what she knew and when she knew it and what she did after that, that will all play into whether or not she could potentially be charged. Is she actively, is she wanted sure. by the Knox County Sheriff's Office? No, because we know where she is. Uh, we're just waiting uh, as a juvenile. We're, uh, let, what the plan initially was to let her get out of school uh, today um, before we actually get do we know how Mr. Matthews, Mr. Luster, and Mr. Siles knew each other? We know that, again, according to witnesses that were there at the scene, they indicate that uh, the victim and the 13-year-old did not know the other two individuals at all. What was this all about? That seems to be the big question. Like, what is this all about? Preliminary information, it appears that it's a low-level marijuana transaction that ran into some kind of a problem. Real quick, do we know why the car that was towed from the scene it was a white uh, Cadillac around 1 a.m.? Do we know why it had grass on it, why it had broken windows, why it was damaged? Yeah, the, the, the car was originally driven by uh, the victim. Uh, the victim exited the car, the victim was shot, the 13-year-old attempted to flee in that vehicle and ended up in an accident in the in the back of that yard. Do we know why um, Mr. Matthews perhaps wasn't charged if he indeed fled from the shooting? Uh, why he's not facing any kind of charges? Yeah, that that'll be up to the district attorney's office whether they ever whether they do charge him. But the information we have right now 
he is a witness. And part of that is, is what he knew when he went over there. If he thought he was just going with a friend to go over and meet some people and this crime occurred, he could potentially not be culpable at all. On the other hand, if he knew something was going to happen, then he, he is potentially facing charges. And then just to reinforce, you said this, the purpose of all these people coming together uh, was a, as you said, a low-level marijuana deal, I guess, was Mikai going to purchase or sell, or do we know that? We do, but we're not something we're not putting out right now. But we did find evidence in the car that would that would sustain that story that it, there was marijuana involved in this meeting. How many times um, was the victim shot? And no, we're not putting that out okay. this time. Was a, a weapon or a firearm left behind? Were you all able to recover it? We have recovered a, a firearm. It was not left behind. Do they have any sort of criminal records, any criminal past? I believe it's all juvenile, I believe. Um, when you say a low-level marijuana transaction, how much are we talking? I think the evidence that was found, probably a value of you know, 60 or $70. You know, we didn't break it open. If it's if, you know hydroponic or some high quality, it could be double that. But uh, all things considered, not, not, a, not a major deal. How is the 13-year-old involved? He was the passenger in the, in the Cadillac and he's the one that went for help. Once his friend was shot, he went door to door on Amberglade asking for assistance. Was this house known as a drug house? Was it known to you guys? Which house? The, the house where they went for the marijuana transaction. No, they didn't go to a house. They were in the street in the car. And there's no connection to Amberglade for any drug transactions. So the house or to them. There's no connections there. But Mr. Matthews lives nearby. He lives, basically, if you go through the yard and through some trees, this is, this is an adjoining neighborhood, and that's where he, he resides. And was that known to you? Was that, had you visited that location before? Had you had any interaction with Mr. Matthews? Not no. that I'm aware of, no. Did the firearm belong to Mr. Stiles? We don't know yet. Uh, there'll be a trace involved. Is a electronic trace is done initially, and then hopefully that'll lead us to the most recent uh, purchaser, and if it hasn't been too long, we can continue to backtrack to determine who it belongs to. It was a pretty scary night for a lot of people who lived out there in West Knox County, honestly, all the way from Loudoun County down to, I mean, downtown, to, and yes. he, it looks like Mr. Stiles made it a pretty long distance. Can you tell me about that and just um, having people lock their doors and really be proactive and keeping an eye out for this, this yeah. gentleman? And, and they were. I mean, those neighborhoods reacted immediately. Uh, again, people were coming out when they saw us, you know, offering us any information they had. Uh, there was nothing, unfortunately, nothing relevant because we learned later that immediately following the shot fired, or shots fired, they got into a vehicle and left. So there wasn't any sightings of them in backyards or anything like that. Um, but very cooperative neighbors and, uh, and residents all throughout that area. How and when did Mr. Matthews split from Stiles? Uh, did he turn himself in? Did he go back home? How did he eventually get separated during this process? Again, preliminary, uh, but it appears that he asked uh, Mr. Stiles to have him dropped off at a different location, and from there, where he stayed, this morning, until we were able to make contact with him and uh, garner his cooperation, where he then met us and so Mr. Luster was the one who fired, or uh, was the one who fired the weapon, correct? No. Or Mr. Luster was the one who died? Luster's the one that died. Um, can you tell us about capturing him today? I, I interviewed a woman who, she was sitting in her Stop. backyard and she saw someone coming towards her, and I think y'all were already out in the Farmington neighborhood. Mm -hmm. He jumped the fence, he ran through her backyard, jumped the other fence, and he started going. And she happened to see you all out there and ran out and said, like, hey, he's that way. Can, can you kind of speak? And I, I know we're touching on this again, but just to neighbors really being the eyes and ears and pseudo detectives for the sure. sheriff's office to make sure that this person who did this. Right. Yeah, and there's no doubt. There's, there's no way we can do our job effectively without the media. And there's no way the media can do their job without the public. And so seeing that hand in hand where we had in every neighborhood we went to it was complete cooperation uh complete transparency anyone wanted to tell us anything they could that had to involve that case 
Um, and obviously we want to resolve it as quickly as we can because there is that overwhelming fear that you know this could be my neighborhood, this could be my backyard. And so uh, luckily with his arrest, it was fairly fast. He did run, he's a pretty good runner. He ran a pretty good distance. Uh, our canine units are incredible and they were able to get on him very quickly and, uh, and apprehend him. He was bitten, but we're hoping it's uh, not that bad an injury. Do we know where Mr. Officer was traveling from? Where he was coming from when he got here? When he got where? Uh, to where he was shot and killed. Do we know where he was coming from? No. No, he, his residence is off of uh, Western Avenue. Do we know who was buying the marijuana and who was selling the marijuana? We do, but that's probably probably the same light of we we're just putting out that it's a it's believed to be a low level marijuana deal, uh, and we really weren't putting anything out beyond that. I want to make clear about how many people were involved. Sure. Um, because you're, you're referring to a 13 year old. Is that um, is that Matthews or is that someone who has not been identified by name? Yeah, we wouldn't identify uh, juveniles. But, so. 13 year old white male who was the passenger in the Cadillac, who was the one that basically went house to house. Um, and asked for assistance on Amber Glade and got it. And we received our first on one call. It was via him providing information that uh, his friend resident. was in the yard and had been shot. So a resident called 911 after he went door knocking essentially? Correct, they said okay. we've got him here, this is what he's saying. And, there's and the, there were five people then, the, the juvenile female, Styles, Matthews, victim, and the 13 year old boy? Correct. Okay. Any gang involvement possibly with this? Uh, there is information, again preliminary, that uh, possible gang membership by two of the uh, five people involved. But we're not specifying who we're, we're not at this point, uh, but that's what we've been told. And then uh, two 18-year-olds involved here. Um, what's the reaction that this has kind of happened within this community? A uh, young man, uh, spoken to a coach of his, says he's a good kid, uh, very athletic. What's your reaction to this kind of thing? I believe he's even friends with Davion Dobson. Um, how do you all feel about this kind of thing happening? I'm not sure what our response would be. I mean, unfortunately, uh, these crimes happen. Uh, profit motivated. Uh, people are trying to make money, do what they can. And in this case, I think our understanding is someone saw an opportunity uh, to make some money through this transaction, and it, and it went it went bad. But it's very unfortunate, obviously. I mean, we don't want to see anyone get killed, in particularly our youth. But that was, I mean, essentially my question is, how did your heart feel when you think about it, that it's this young kid who is the second one at Fulton to be ripped from this community in a horrendous way, when you think about it? We weren't here that long ago talking about a 19-year-old in Powell. In this lifestyle, these things happen. That's why it's just imperative to stay out of this lifestyle. You know, drugs just don't kill with overdoses. You know, there's other ways drugs kill, and this is one of them. And back to what Mike said about our community and the help that we receive, it goes to show. Um, I mean, shooting in Powell shows it. This, the, you know, this tragic crime right here shows it. Uh, our community is. It's overwhelming the support that we receive in this sheriff's office from our community. And, and we thank them so very much because we could not do our job and be as successful as we are in this agency without our community. Do we happen to know what charges yeah. um, the suspect will be facing at this point? You may have touched on it. I did. Uh, that's being worked on right now. Uh, it'll be felony murder, but whether or not it's going to be first or second degree, uh, to be determined by the by the district attorney uh, and uh, you know, deputy assistant district attorney, I believe that's the term, uh, uh, Fitzgerald Takesha would be uh, handling this case. Is he still in the hospital, the suspect? He, he is. Do we know when he'll be in court next? I know this is all very new. No, it's a little bit, little bit of a medical, I would say complication, but a uh, little, little more extent to it than we initially thought. And so he's being assessed right now with a, a surgical consult for his uh, bicep. And then that will determine when he'll be released and then placed into our custody. Was he been by one dog or more than one? One dog. Do you know the name of the dog? I should. I don't. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I will next time. 
I said, as far as the, I think everybody has the spelling of the names, our victim, uh, M-E-K-H-A, middle initial L, Luster, L-U-S-T-E-R, uh, 19 years of age. Our suspect, Isaiah, I-S-A-I-A-H, middle initial T, Styles, S-T-Y-L-E-S. And he showed a uh, Barrington address, and he was arrested in the 1800 block of Penwood. And he is 18 years old. Our witness, uh, Sovereign, standard spelling, Matthews. And he is at, uh, his residence is on Clear Ridge, and he is 18 years of age. And then our white male, 13 year old, uh, which we were, only we were providing air there, he was an associate or associated with the victim, uh, Mr. Luster. Is, is the victim 18 or 19? The victim is 19. Right. Now, in, in, yeah, right. in the so Facebook post earlier, it said 18. And you also spell his name with the I and the first name instead of the name. Yeah, this is supposed to be the one. Could you, could you reiterate the official spelling and his age? M-E-K-H-A, middle initial L, Luster, L-U-S-T-E-R. And Martha, can I give him date of birth? Uh, yeah. 12, 14 of 98, so okay. whatever that makes him. Uh, I have him as 19, is that correct? Not two, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Could you, do you know how to pronounce that first name? I think it's Micah. It's, it's, it's I'm talking to family today, it's uh, Mika. 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 Yeah. Is there anything worth getting to ask you that you want to add? I know it's been. I mean, we're calling it Clear Ridge, right? Clear Springs, I think we said. Yes, yeah, Clear, Clear Ridge. Ridge. It's Clear Ridge, yeah. yes. <laughs> I don't have it on here somewhere. <laughs> we knew it was Clear something. Yeah. Nothing else. 